Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making Eaton Mess, a symphony of strawberries, whipped cream, and meringue. So let's get started. First off, a little bit about the meringue cookies. These are light, crunchy, and amazing, but they can be difficult to find. I can't get them at my market, so I'm gonna show you how to make them. It's really fun and easy. If you have them on hand, just skip ahead to the time code below. Into your mixer, we're gonna add four egg whites. No yolks in this. This needs to whip up to be amazing, light, and fluffy. One word about meringues, they can be a little bit difficult if it's really rainy outside or very high humidity. You want a dry day for the most perfect meringue possible. However, we're gonna be crunching them up into this eaten mess so no one will know if they look less than great. Right now I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar right into the egg whites. It's an acid that'll help stabilize them. I'm also adding a pinch of salt for contrast. And we're gonna start mixing this up while it mixes. Start on low. I'm gonna add one cup of sugar and for the best meringue possible, use super fine sugar. It has a finer grain, closer to powdered sugar almost, and it'll dissolve into your egg whites really easily. Once your egg whites are frothed up, we're gonna start adding our sugar in. And the key to a nice meringue is just to go slow. Don't dump it in. That'll deflate the egg whites, it's too much sugar. Add it in gradually. Pretend you have all the time in the world. It's getting close. Right now it's at a soft peak stage, but I want beautiful marshmallowy stiff peaks. And the sugar is just about done. Let's check this out and see what it looks like right now. So it's a little bit soft. While it finishes mixing, I'm gonna add just a kiss of vanilla for a little bit of extra flavor. This is a stiff peak. You can tell, because if you look inside, that peak is completely like marshmallows, basically. If you haven't had Eaton Mess before, it's not a super sweet dessert. The sweetness really comes from those strawberries macerated with the sugar. The whipped cream, just barely sweet, mostly creamy and light. And the meringues are here to give you airy, crunchy amazingness. You're gonna love this recipe. It's one of those things you can just keep eating and you're like, oh, it's so light and delicious. Meanwhile, you ate like five billion cups of whipped cream, strawberries, and meringues. That's a good thing. Preheat your oven to 200 degrees. Low and slow is the way for meringue. Now you want a nice star tip. I'm using an 869. It's one of my all-time favorites. Piping these is the most fun ever, and it's one of the reasons like I just refuse to buy meringues. I have to make them. Fill your piping bag and try to get no air bubbles. Add a dab of meringue onto your baking sheet. This will just be the glue to help hold the paper on. Now we're gonna pipe our meringue kisses. The shape doesn't matter as much because we're gonna crumble them, but I'll show you how to do it the right way. Hold your piping tip just a little bit above the paper, squeeze and lift, and you'll get a perfect little kiss. So you hold it above, squeeze, and then stop squeezing the bag and lift off. There we go, and just continue until all your meringue is used. So this dessert's called an Eaton Mess. It's named after Eaton College. It's a classic English dessert, and sometimes it's known as like a, like a school kid's dessert. If you know exactly when Eaton Mess was created, can you please let me know in the comments because I was reading many different things. It was served at a match between Eaton and Harrow, and that was in like in 1930, but I don't think it was created in 1930. I think it's older. And on the Gilded Age on HBO, it's a show I love, they served it at dinner, and that's the Gilded Age, which is much further away from 1930 than you can imagine. There we go. One done, one to go. These are so pretty. And this will make more meringues than you need for your Eaton Mess, but you could make more Eaton Mess or save these for later. They'll keep in an airtight container for well over two weeks. Our meringue cookies go into the oven 200 degrees for one hour in the center rack. Then trim the oven off and leave it in the oven closed for one to two more hours to completely dry them out. Once your beautiful meringue cookies have been obtained, you only need 16 of them. So you have some for snacking on and giving away later. You could also double this recipe really easily to serve a big crowd. Now we're gonna grab one and a half pounds of strawberries, giving them a nice soak just to wash off anything I don't wanna eat. I'm gonna drain these out. I need to hull all of these, so just remove that top bit. And I will say that Eaton Mess is one of those amazing seasonal dishes that just shines when you have the best strawberries possible. You can make these with winter strawberries. I've done it, it's still delicious, but the best Eaton Mess is with those summer sweet strawberries that are almost falling apart. If you can't get strawberries, you can make this with other berries too. It works really well with basically any berry. 
I'm really just removing the leaves from the strawberry. I don't want to waste too much of those delicious strawberry fruit pieces. Eaton Mess is so simple. It really just has three components, the meringue, whipped cream, and strawberries. But by doing a few things with these components, you create a wonderful symphony of like light, amazing flavors with a contrast of textures. You have creamy, you have like amazing berryness, and you have the crunchy meringues. Each spoonful is delicious. Okay, my strawberries are hulled. One third of the strawberries are going into a bowl. And if you can, choose the most ripe strawberries for this part. The strawberries in your bowl are getting smashed. You could use a fork, you could use a muddler, you could even blend them up if you wanted to, but I do not want to like get the blender out right now. And there's no need, it's so easy. By smashing them, we're having the strawberries release a ton of juice. So it's gonna be like another nice texture. These look great. The remaining strawberries get quartered, so they're gonna be nice and small pieces that'll fit on a spoon with some other delicious things. Just quarter them and pop them into the bowl. The smashing part is great for the little kids to help with in the kitchen, especially if you wanna put some idle hands to work. I'm about to turn this bowl into delicious macerated strawberries two different ways. First of all, I'm gonna add one cup of super fine sugar to my berries. Do you have to use super fine sugar? No, you do not. You could use granulated sugar. The super fine dissolves really nicely and you're not gonna have any grainy bits. But if you only have granulated sugar, it will work as well. Or you could process or blend your sugar. It'll make it super fine, basically. The sugar is gonna draw liquid out of the strawberries and give you a wonderful, like, sweet strawberry juice. This just needs about 10 minutes to sit. Brian likes a classic eaten mess. I like mine with a few extra ingredients, so I'm gonna divide this into two batches and you can see some ways to gussy it up. One batch is for me. I'm adding a little bit of orange zest to this. Also adding in just a splash of a nice orange liqueur. Mix that up and let it hang out for 10 minutes. In the meantime, we're gonna make our whipped cream, grab our dessert cups and get to assembling. I'm adding two cups of cold, heavy cream into a large bowl. This has actually been in the freezer for a few minutes, so it cools down. It helps everything whip up quicker. I'm also adding in two teaspoons of that super fine sugar. At this stage, you could have used granulated or even powdered sugar. And I'm gonna whip this up until it is nice, soft, luscious peaks. You could also add in a drop of vanilla, half to one teaspoon, and um, just give it a little bit more flavor if you want to. Your whipped cream will start thickening up. And once it does, keep a very careful eye on it because it'll over whip really quickly. My beaters are leaving a trail in my whipped cream. I'm gonna finish it off by hand. There we go, nice soft peaks. It's not just falling off of my whisk, it's holding its shape. Now we can assemble. I just tasted my fancier version and I realized it could use a splash of elderflower liqueur. Now we are talking, just mix it up. And the one thing we have to do is crush our meringues, but I want this to look like a beautiful dessert and Eaton Mess can be kind of a mess. You're gonna carefully break yours up and try to get some of these tips off without breaking, or at least find some pieces that look pretty. We're gonna stick those on top and just give the uh, appearance of a beautiful thought out dessert. There we go, just like that. Half our meringues are getting straight up crushed. This you can crush them like this between two bowls or have some fun with it. <laughs> you basically just want small pieces like this. They're gonna float in your mixture. The rest of your meringues get chopped up or just smashed like I'm doing it into larger pieces. They'll give you some crunch for the creamy moments to contrast with. I'm gonna assemble these two different ways for you. One in a big cup, one in a fancy little coupe desert glass. We're gonna start off by adding some whipped cream to the bottom. The one thing is try not to smear the walls of your glass with too much of the, uh, the whipped cream or strawberries. Add your strawberries in. Now, some of your meringue. More cream. More strawberries. Some more meringue. Some more cream. <laughs> And this dessert is so generous. And you can make this like up to like three hours ahead of time. I think it's best if served immediately after assembling though, because at that point the meringue is at its crunchiest. And now, as I promised, a few of my beautiful broken pieces on top, just to, to show you this dessert has so many delicious things inside. Mine, I tasted the strawberries with the elderflower liqueur in it. So good. 
It's the same process. If you're using like a little glass, you're just gonna have smaller layers. By the way, if you're like me and you love whipped cream, you could double the whipped cream in this and have very generously appointed whipped creamy moments. Which reminds me, take some of the strawberry juice and drizzle it over the top, just like that. Which do you like better? You'll have to try it on your own, but I'm gonna try this one right now. Perfectly light, creamy, crunchy, berry amazingness. It's a kiss of summer in a cup. The classic is amazing too. Try both, let me know what you like better. I hope you get a chance to make this, and if you like this video, check out my summer dessert playlist.